Welcome back. My name is Jim Caseman, and, we, the, and we're talking about how to get to know God intimately. And of course, the only way we can do that, we have to understand the entire Bible because we have, there's all these different subjects in the Bible, and we want to walk in these areas, whether it's divine healing or deliverance or success or prosperity, whatever the subject might be, redemption, uh, that we walk in it God's way so that we can prosper and flourish and have good results and healthy lives and long lives. And so we need to examine, like I said, the entire scriptures and all the subjects in the Bible. We don't just eliminate some subjects because we get uncomfortable with them or to create a problem or whatever, so we just don't talk about faith or we just don't talk about alcohol uh, or talk about healing because if we pray for somebody you don't get healed, you know, what'll happen? People become discouraged and whatever. You know, we've got more problems using our heads and human reasoning. And of course, human reasoning has in it the seeds of death. You cannot understand spiritual things or God's word with human reasoning. So the last session, we did talk about some of the effects of alcohol. We even read the scriptures that had in Proverbs 23, verse 29 to 33. And then we talked about the biblical truth that God is life and Satan is death. God is truth, Satan is a liar. And Satan perverts at everything that God creates. And then you, you, you begin to realize, not just with the subject of alcohol, but with other subjects, you know, like walking in love and holiness and marriage and all these things, you know, there's people who you know, they pick and choose. Yeah, I'm going to, I like this part of the Bible about financial prosperity, but then they don't want anything to do with the rest of the Bible. Now, how can you do that? Well, here's one thing the Bible says in Romans, oh, Romans, I'm sorry, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13 it says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. You could put on there, hate sin. Sin is evil. Or disobedience. That's evil. Unbelief. That's evil. I refuse to. I, I, I'm just going to ignore that subject in God's word because it means I'm going to have to change something in my life. And I'm not willing to do that because my friends will make fun of me or whatever, you know. And of course, there's no reverential fear of God. Do you really understand who God is? He created this whole universe. Then he gave his life so that we could be set free from the power of sin and the devil and death. That we could be set free and live healthy lives and enjoy eternity in heaven with God. But, if you, but there has to be a reverential fear because God is also a God of justice. Yeah. And, and a God of truth. And so sin, when it is full, God has no choice. He has to punish sin. So there's the judgment side of God, which is also the love side. Because if sin is not corrected, it will bring destruction to the entire body of Christ and God and, and destroy his entire creation. So he has to judge sin. He has to punish it. Otherwise, it'll destroy his entire creation. And so if we disobey God and we continue to practice sin, he has, we're, we're in the packet. We'll be destroyed. We'll be thrown in hell with the rest of everything. God has no choice. He is a God of love. He needs to protect his creation. So we have to make sure, so we need a, there needs to be a reverential fear. There's the judgment side of God. You, God knows exactly what you're thinking. He knows what I'm thinking. He knows what I, he knows everything about me. You can't hide anything from him. You can't. He knows everything. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. He's all present. He's transcendent, which means he's not dependent on his creation for anything. Triune, internal, unchangeable, and he's a God of holy, he's holy, and he's sinless. And in order to have an intimate relationship with him, we also have to be holy. Well, what did Jesus do? With the precious shed blood of Jesus Christ and redemption, the Ephesians 4.24 tells us that he created us in true righteousness and holiness. So we were created holy when we're born again as believers, as Christians. We're created holy and righteous. So why? So that we can dwell in the holiest, the holy presence of God and fellowship with God. That's why he created us. 
That's the primary reason why God went suffered the death penalty for us on the cross to pay the price for our sins. He suffered the wrath and judgment of God for three days and three nights in hell so we wouldn't have to go to hell so that we could spend, so that we could be in God's immediate presence and fellowship with him. That's what redemption's all about. Fellowshipping with him. And as we fellowship with him in the holiest, that's where we get direction for our lives, our ministries. That's where we intercede. That's where the power is. And that's where we pray for people. That's where God intended for us to be. No matter if you're in the ministry or whatever you're doing, every single believer is to dwell in the presence of God, as we talked about in quite a few sessions before this one. And so then, we need to have a reverential fear of God, a reverential fear. There is, there, there is punishment for sin. So the best thing to do is repent, get cleansed, get forgiven, and, there, and also cleansed from all unrighteousness. You know, Isaiah 20, well, let's see, 43, 25 says, I, even I, am he who has blotted out your transgressions, blotted out your sins, and I'll not remember your sins. So we can repent, get forgiven, get cleansed, and stand in God's presence just like we've never ever done anything wrong. Praise be to God. You know, we need to have a respect and honor and a reverential fear of God. He's really alive. Whether you sense his presence or not, he's everywhere. And so let's do it God's way. I'd rather be in good standing with God instead of the devil because the devil leads to hell god leads to heaven <laughs> well anyway i got going off on that well now we're talking about alcohol and the old testament is not silent about alcohol as a beverage now the word wine appears more than 200 times in the king james version of the old testament 200 times the word wine appears. Now, in the land of Israel, uh, it was not only a land flowing with milk and honey. In the Old Testament times, it also was a land blessed with fertile fields, vineyards, and olive, and olive groves, olive trees. And the land with its mild climate was so well suited for planting vineyards and cultivating the vine that its produce is one of Israel's best annual agricultural yields. So grapes, raisins, and wine are mentioned often in the Old Testament. Now when dried into raisins, grapes could be preserved as a nutritious food and energy source to be eaten all year around. Also, by boiling down grape juice into concentrate, it could be preserved from spoiling and fermenting and then used over a longer period of time as sweet syrups, jellies, or reconstituted as grape juice by adding water to the concentrate for more, and adding water to the concentrate. Now wine, as the fruit of the vine, was a common table drink in Old Testament times. Sometimes the wine drunk by the Israelites was clearly fermented and presented a potential problem of intoxication. The very first mention of wine in the Old Testament is connected with drunkenness, shame, and a curse. And of course, we see that in, in Genesis chapter 9, when Noah, of course, ended up getting drunk after, he, after, after the great flood. And of course, then he was found uh, naked uh, in a tent. And of course, he was not covered properly uh, by Ham when he saw the naked his father and he told his two brothers outside. And of course, then he ended up, Noah ended up waking up and of course, Ham received a curse. So we see in this very first mention of drunkenness, there's shame and a curse came about because of Noah's drunkenness. Now, isn't that interesting? After the great flood. Well, we'll pick up on that in the next session. Again, we're, we're examining the entire scriptures, old and bad, about alcohol in the Old and the New Testament. 
So you be blessed, and we'll see you in the next session. Amen.